night you will get your dick ripped off. Cause every time we touch, our hands feel it. Hello, I'm Heisenberg White, and you're listening to episode three of the Never Ever Show. With me today is a guest that for the last two episodes, both me and my other guests, have had nothing but wonderful things to say about. A well-respected content creator known for their eccentric and hilariously themed cooking shows. This individual also hosts fun interactive live streams and is simply universally adored by any and everyone who knows them. Ladies and gentlemen, Chef Tango. And, and also, I think TCAP Recipes is with them, so... Okay. Liquid Lord here with TCAP Recipes. Tango is actually taking a nap right now on the uh, the, 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 the treadmill. Actually, it's a queen-sized bed, just a disclaimer. A well-deserved nap, seeing as how hard she works. Oh, she works hard. She's the hardest-working uh, person on our uh, crew right now. And the least hardest working would be Ven Interactive Media, who I just fired today. You don't say. Yeah. I can no longer do business with uh, that web producer anymore. That so-called web producer. Yeah, exactly. Well, I'm very happy you were able to join me today. I'm sure you're familiar with how the show works. We're going to go through a series of questions in an attempt to sort of gauge each other's tastes and things. These questions will here and there out be, uh, you know, sporadically TCAP related. Most of it is just going to be asking personal tastes and a lot of, you know, a couple of them are going to be really far out stuff just to make you think. Okay. Yeah, okay. That sounds like a plan. Before I get into my questions that I have for you, my my first one I just wanted to know before we officially get started is, you've only been with the TCAP community for a little over a year now, is that correct? I've only been making content for about a year or so, yes. I had a pet channel before. It was uh, going to be called Tango's World, but it ended up getting clapped. Unfortunately, it ended up getting deleted for some reason. I don't know if it got hacked or something like that, but I've been watching from afar since 2017. I'm upset that that channel didn't work. You'd think, I, I wouldn't think like YouTube would have a problem with it. It just got lost in the ether. Somewhere. I, you know what I think happened? There is a, uh, there is a channel in the community called uh, Trap Town NCS. And they're always in the comment room, like great video. Would you like to be YouTube friends? Which, that's the newest code for sub for sub. And what happens if you subscribe to this channel, they get your information somehow. And I think I fell for one of those. Oh, no. In my comment room. And I said, well, yeah, I have 40 subs. Let's do it, you know? Which, that's a really shitty way to build a channel. Like, d never do sub for sub. Always do it organically. Lessons we learn along the way, right? And uh, hopefully you didn't lose exactly. any, like, valuable data or anything. I lost a couple of my... Uh, pet cooking videos which was kind of the birth of teacap recipes there was a homemade meatballs i did for dogs and a chicken pot pie i did for the dog huh. there was almost going to be a homemade mac and cheese i made for the dog so teacap <laughs> recipes turning... is a spin-off actually it kind of is yeah and it and it grew bigger than i ever intended it was originally supposed to be 50 subs three videos and i said if i got to 51 subs i would make more content and sure as shit, I got to about a hundred. I'm like, really? I'm like, all right, let's what get are you it. Sitting at right now. Last time I checked, I was at 653. Hey, that's fantastic. All right. Yeah, I'm at 653. I've got a couple of my favorite YouTubers talking about me on your show, along with you, obviously. I'm like, really? Rapidly growing as well. Always making new things. Like I said, hosting live streams. Uh, pretty uh, sporadically but uh, i don't think you have okay yeah. to, uh, like an actual schedule but you still pump I out don't. quite a lot of content pretty regularly yeah i need to get back on a regular schedule i haven't uh, found january threw me off with the whole uh, second more like third job thing but I, that that threw me right off i was uploading every weekend but i've been very sporadic now i'm gonna try to get a consistent schedule that way people know when to tune in and all that fun stuff well that'd be great to speak a little bit more on your time just as a community member going back all the way to 2017, about a year or so after even I sort of got invested. I mean, we, there have been people in and out of this since maybe mid to early 2015, I guess. 
Um, yeah. What I'd like to know is, as as a follower of this community, what were some of your favorite things to witness in the past few years? And is it at all any different now that you have a voice uh, and can speak on some of these events? The coolest thing I found out was, it was around 2018, I was kind of getting back into it, I had discovered clobbering time. And what was when I discovered the Lord calls. At first, I thought it was a little weird, but as I kept learning and learning... I was just, I loved the community. That was thing one for me, you know, like some of the nicest, coolest people I've ever talked to. I think that was probably my favorite part was the fact that this dude was still getting catfished like to this day, you know, it was just the funniest stuff I'd ever heard. It's fun to follow and it's hard to follow. You're right. There's so much just raw data and things to, I mean, you have the chat log, the footage, the unaired footage, the inter the interrogation, the... Uh, Ramona calls the uh, the first contacts, and then now there's a whole another series and segments of calls after that that's gone all the way up until uh, what was probably my favorite moment to watch and witness uh, when he was sent back to jail. <laughs> oh, it's true. It took me a year to get it all in order. It got it was a bit of a, a reviving moment, a renaissance for uh, the community. Yeah, that was hilarious. That actually helped my channel too, to be honest with you. That was because when uh, a certain uh, popcorn man started clapping channels, like I was growing rapidly and then like I just stopped growing for a while because I had to hide everything. And then when that happened, I was able to kind of, you know, gain some traction again, which was nice. And uh, here we are today. Yeah. So, yeah. all right, here we go then. I'm gonna start off with another YouTube related question, kind of similar to the one I just asked, but first I'd like to know, what has been your favorite part about being a YouTuber so far, just in general? Being able to interact with my community and to learn from them has been wonderful, you know? That's, that's been a big part of it for me. I've learned a lot of actual cooking stuff too as I've progressed as well, which has been really nice. And most of us have the same goals in mind. And there's a lot of deep thinkers in the community, you know, beyond the To Catch a Predator stuff, you know. It's nice to watch channels that otherwise have uh, come from a similar mindset of, I'm doing this for fun, of, of what yeah. I want to do on my own schedule, my own time, what interests me. Still, despite the many, many challenges there is already of just being a YouTuber, achieving some mild to pretty uh, amazing success throughout the years be it um or just a few months of content and uh you know some people have been grinding out and posting things and editing things for for a long time now and uh are seeing the return on that sort of investment nobody's out here really to get rich we're really out here to have fun but it creates such a nice network and community like you said it really is a motivation to keep going and keep making things right all right now my next question to you what is the best movie you've ever seen versus your favorite movie? Are they the same? Or can you accept a critical type art house or something, you know, a film that you know is, is a really good film on its own versus what movie you just love for the fact that you love it? I'm going to say the best movie, like from a production standpoint, in my personal opinion, was Avatar. I saw it in 2009 with my brothers, and I remember the first time I saw it, I was just amazed. Like, the, the graphics, the script, like, everything sucked me in. It was just so amazing. I have the attention span of a goldfish, and that was, it, I, I didn't feel bored at all. That would be, like, I think the best movie. My favorite movie is the complete opposite. It's a uh, movie from, I believe, Hong Kong called Ricky O. It is just the cheesiest fucking thing I've ever seen in my life, but it's so goddamn hilarious. There's one scene where Ricky O punches this fat dude through his stomach and rips his arm through the stomach. You can tell it's just, it's fake, but it's so goddamn funny. Like, I, I would definitely recommend it. Is, it. is there like a really comical scene of a character like blowing up kind of in that movie? Uh, yes, yes, there is. I think I know what you're talking about. I've yeah, never seen a person, I but I, I have a feeling love I know what that you're movie. About. Yeah, that's interesting. You'd say Avatar. I'm curious. When was the last time you actually watched it? Again, also 2009. 
That's, that seems to be everybody's fun to tell you. Uh, let me see about this. Can you name three characters from that movie? That is a very good question. And uh, it's very good that you would ask that question. And I would like to thank you for asking me that question. Top, top, one of the top grossing films of all time for about 10 years. Uh. <laughs> I have no fucking idea. Nope. <laughs> I remember Jake Sully. Uh, it was the main character's name, and that's about it. You've got one more on me. I, I same same thing. Uh, saw it around 2009 when it was in theaters. Even a few weeks after it was in theaters, the theater was still packed with people going to see it. A technical feat. Yeah, same here. My dad really wanted to see it, so I was like, yeah, we'll, we'll go. Y okay. I enjoyed it overall. Yeah, it was nice. It was very immersive, for sure. Oh yeah. With the 3D technology at the time, which has only since improved and, and will likely be even more mind blowing in the next couple of years when they do end up releasing these sequels that have been in works for a while. So we'll see. Yeah, digital, I mean, digital 4K and IMAX uh, tech, I mean, even Avatar looking back, like as 3D became more of a popular thing in the mid like 20 teens, it just got less and less blurry and, and more focused. There, I mean, there was a period where every single movie released was 3D for some reason when it didn't really need to be. I can't even remember the last 3D movie I went to. I don't even think I saw Endgame in 3D. I have not been to a movie theater in forever, so. Within two years? Uh, Probably more like nine years. Whoa, you saw Avatar and you were like, I'm done, they'll never make a better movie. <laughs> No, I think the movie I saw after that was Jack and Jill with Adam Sandler. Oh my god, that's enough to scare anybody away. From. Yeah, it's, that scared me away for a while. <laughs> I mean, I liked it at the time, but I was like, yeah, I'm not paying for that shit. I could have watched that for free. <laughs> well, a lot of it's because I always have my dog with me, and I don't really like doing things without the, the dog for some reason. I've become one of those people. Is that right, Tango? I think for myself... One that always comes to mind in terms of best films I've ever seen that always I could tell was a good production and, and elicited a lot of emotional response from me. One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, Jack Nicholson. Oh, that was a good I one. I think is one of the uh, best films ever made. And that, like like that too for me, I haven't seen in a long time actually, but that's always seemed to have been my go-to answer in terms of like best movies I've seen. I could probably think of a couple more, but it, there's a great balance, especially when it comes to my favorite kind of movie where, where you kind of touched on there, there's liking a movie because it's good and liking a movie because it's bad. Yes. I There are some fantastic movies I love to watch because they're bad. I think that is mostly due to the fact that I've been a big fan of Mystery Science Theater, if you remember or are aware of that show. What, what was the show again? Mystery Science Theater. 3000. Oh, yeah, yeah, Mystery Science Theater 3000, yeah. Watching those old terrible movies uh, and learning yes. to give them uh, a new life by just ragging on them. You know what? That kind of reminds me of some of Big Salmon skits when you said that, honestly. Yeah, they're very clearly like inspired when Phil by Phil and Wes would, yes. uh, would do the uh, food reviews. Like, that actually was the inspiration for, like, I'm not trying to bring it back to me, but that was the inspiration of, like, Cornville Cod Salad and stuff like that. So I, might, I just want to give Salmon a shout out in Oh Rested. So while I can appreciate, let's see, what's a recent film? Oh, um. I watched The Lighthouse recently, Willem Dafoe, Robert Pattinson, black and white art house film. Loved it, fantastic. Oh, no doubt. Uh, I, at just as easily on the other end of the spectrum, I get just as much enjoyment out of watching Mac and Me, the E.T. alien ripoff puppet piece of shit that was made by McDonald's. Have you ever heard of that? No. Mac and Me. How did I not hear of that? It was probably around the time I was, that was around the 80s, right? Yes. I was bored in 83. Uh, closer to the late 80s, probably, yes. Just the, the pinnacle of pathetic, cash-grabby product placement. No, you know, so transparent in what it was trying to be, what it was trying to do. And it's it's there's so many things wrong with it, but it's just a wonderful piece of cinema. Uh, if, if that's not my favorite, I think my favorite is actually probably where I would meet right in the middle of those two and talk about my favorite film, Tron Legacy, which came out in 2010. Disney's Tron Legacy, the follow-up sequel to the long-awaited uh, Tron. The original Tron is kind of meh. To be honest, it, it gives me a headache to watch, just the, the, like, the dark, 
uh, black light colors that most of the movie is shot in. You gotta love Jeff Bridges. Jeff Bridges is one of my favorite actors. In the sequel, I went in blind, not even knowing the original story at all. I, I, I knew there was a movie, uh, but I went in blind first off uh, to, to touch around that same time when 3D things were starting to get really good. That was by far my favorite movie to ever see in 3D in the theaters. It's such a cyberpunk kind of aesthetic, uh, very bright neon lights and a very dark landscape. It just looks super cool to see in the theater. Most of my like, you know, most of what I like about the movie is most of those technical aspects. Like the Daft Punk soundtrack is incredible. Uh, the original score Disney made for the film is incredible. The story is, uh, it's all right. It was a technical feat again in uh, paved the way in uh, de aging technology, where it shaved about 30 years off of Jeff Bridges and uh, created another Jeff Bridges in addition to the already existing Jeff Bridges in the movie. There were two Jeff Bridges, which, uh, you know, Ooh. Double, double your fun. Uh, he, you know, he, like I said, he's one of my favorite actors. There's just a, an indescribable... I can't put it into words. The first time I saw it, I was mildly impressed and I kind of enjoyed it. And it just uh, happened that I had some other friends who wanted to see it on a different day. And I went back again and watched it again in the theater with a whole new perspective and, and knowing what to look for and I, I just fell in love with it again the second time around. Dude, that's awesome. Like, the guy turned into two Jeff Bridges, huh? <laughs> yep. <laughs> that is freaking crazy. Yeah. I don't even know if I would ever, like, recommend it to anybody. I don't know who it's for, but but for me, it's just had a special place in my heart. Oh, my God, 10 years now that film's been out. Jesus. Time flies, man. Oh, no shit. Oh, it, it sure does. It felt like yesterday... I was in the theater watching Jack and Jill going, I don't know what the hell this is, but I'm not paying full price for a movie ever again. <laughs> I was just like, yeah. I'm not saying he's not a, a great actor. I think he would be better in dramas at this point. Yeah, I've watched about the first two thirds of this uh, uncut gems movie that people have been gushing over. The reason I didn't finish, it was just an in, uh, incredibly intense movie. A very... It just had me on edge the whole movie. It's loud and it's fast, and I just needed to like step away from it after a while. But uh, I fully intend to finish it. I was oh yeah pretty impressed with the the beginning of it um, and, and the middle, but I haven't finished it yet. Here's my next question to you: Have you ever attempted an eating challenge of any kind? Surprisingly, no. And I say surprisingly because in real life I'm actually a 280 pound man. Believe it or not, I'm not just a set of arms. Don't tell anybody that, though. Never drop the gimmick, brother. Oh, that, your secret's safe with me. Maybe to spin off that, uh, can you recall the time where you, in a, in a single sitting, ate the most amount of food? Uh, yes, actually, that happened today. <laughs> I'll, I'm going to tell you what happened. Today is, uh, when we're recording the interview, is February 15th. It's the day after Valentine's Day. Guess what happens at places like Walmart? On the 15th, all your Valentine's candy is 50% off. I proceeded to buy a whole bag of those Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Even though I'm supposed to be doing low carb right now, but I worked overtime today, so I said I'm going to have sugar today because I always associate overtime with donuts, and I had that earlier. But to get back to the point, after I brought home the bag, I said I'll make these last a couple days. And then I decided to click my Streamlabs. I turned my live streaming on, and I said, I'm going to eat this whole bag right here right now. Uh, how, how do you feel about that now? I, I feel kind of gross, but it was really good. Shout out to Reese's. That's some of the best candy out there in, in every yeah, shape Yeah, big and ups form. Reese's. Yeah, big ups Reese's. As for myself, I, I, I can recall many times where I gorge myself with food this this attempt might not have even been the time i ate the most but it, uh, it comes to mind there's a there was a local pizza restaurant in my hometown called the comic book cafe right very cool place lined wall to wall with these vintage comics lots of figurines and, and a big like statues of, of superheroes all over the bar really cool there's a comic book store in the the restaurant too which is neat and like a little arcade it's just a cool place when i was a junior i believe in high school we had just wrapped up production on our last show of a musical season 
and we had made plans, myself and a couple of our friends, to go specifically to this place to take on what we had heard about, which was called the Pizzasaurus Rex. A, um, I wonder if I can just off the top of my head remember everything that it was. It was, a, it, I think, a full medium pepperoni pizza with a pound of shredded steak on top, a pound of hot fries, oh. all these fried vegetables mixed in, and six pieces of garlic bread. All, uh, what felt like four or five pounds of food at least, if not, if not more. Oh, that sounds amazing. It was, it was a mountain. It was incredible. Six of us were there. Every one of us orders the same thing. That the kitchen must have hated us that day to make that much food at once. But so we all we all dug in. I didn't even come close. Uh, I, I if I'm maybe I finished a third of it. It was so dense, and the garlic bread, which I tried to get out of the way first, I think is what did me over. Just filled it up on it too soon. And nobody ended up nobody ended up winning. Um, the two funny stories though out of that are friend at the time his name is Dalton he came so close I'm talking within maybe five or six bites and he was feeling good and we were absolutely confident he was gonna make it what we didn't realize was that after we had left the school he had failed to update his mother as to where he was going and his whereabouts she was freaking out was very upset had to call around to figure out where he was and finally by the time he's about to finish his meal his mom comes in Dalton what the hell are you, where the hell have you been? Like, I've been trying to call you. And he goes, sorry, I've, I've been here. And she's like, you need to come home right now. And there was a brief back and forth, an argument, and he just had to throw his money down and leave. Oh, it was man. the saddest thing I've ever seen because he got so in trouble. And, I mean, was so close. The other thing happened after I left. A, a friend that kept trying to power through ended up puking into a, a pitcher of water oh, on the table. Dude. I'm, I'm happy I wasn't there for that. But I did hear about it. I, I've attempted it one more time since then, but not as a challenge. I've just enjoyed it and took the leftovers home and chipped at it throughout the week. It was delicious. But that's that's the closest I ever came to any kind of feat like that. Yeah, yeah. Next, I'd like to know what archetype, uh, speaking of high school, what archetype or clique would you say best described you in high school? And would you say that's still the case today? I actually, uh, high school, I kind of hung out with a little bit of everybody. I was like a jack of all trades and a master of none. But like my closest friends at the time, like I look back and I'm like, I could have, not all of them, a lot of them are really awesome. Like I hung out with a lot of metalheads, honestly. Like those are probably the best people I hung out with in high school. I still talk to a lot of them today. And as for how I would be today, uh, I would be, I think it, I'm not saying I wouldn't hang out with metalheads, but it'd be like a little bit different now, I guess. Because I'm like, I'm just a very different person than I was in high school. And in high school, I was just kind of, kind of a clinger, you know, like I just kind of hang out with any and everybody. But now I'm kind of, I'm content being solo, you know what I mean? Like I, I don't give a shit. Yeah, I, th- I think as adults actually grow up and mature, we, we start to fall out of a specific like identity and sort of just take yeah. on more things. Some people Big never time. lose that identity and, and stay that way forever. But uh, yeah, as, t- as time goes on and, and people mature, you, you learn to not not go with the flow as much, just uh, enjoy what you enjoy. Yeah. If you couldn't tell by the, my last story, it was a theater kid, which yeah. sucks because I loved theater so much, but I hated right. other theater kids. Especially other guys in the theater who never really took it seriously. Yeah, I can relate to that. Mostly just used it as a chance to like hit on the girls. I mean, I mean, yep. I understand, but they're just very loud and obnoxious, like twenty four seven. Like they don't know how to turn it off. Oh yeah, sure. My uh, senior, my senior year in high school, I was in a class like that. It was uh, for video editing. And it was really ahead of its time because we didn't have YouTube. This was uh, back in 2001, 2002. And you were taught how to use Macromedia Flash. Oh my God, I'm dating myself over here. <laughs> like I was taught to uh, make cartoons and make websites and to make videos. And it was such a cool opportunity and I never wanted to really miss it. And my work partner that was in the class, like he skipped half the year. And I'm like, what the fuck am I doing all this shit, you know? 
But it was cool because now I can, that's how I'm able to edit my YouTube videos now. It's because I took that class back at 02, and I know how to edit now, you know? Such a handy skill to have. I never thought I'd use it either, because, like, when I graduated, I'm like, what the fuck am I going to do with this? I loved this, and I can't do it now. I was depressed for so long. And now I'm actually able to freaking do something with it. It's like, fucking finally. <laughs> That's how most people <laughs> feel with college degrees. They're like, oh, oh, oh I'm actually going to yeah. get to use this thing. Oh. Right? Next, I want to know, think, try to think quickly, but, you know, think thoroughly. What, yeah. When I say the words action movie, what is the first film that comes to mind? Last Action Hero. Yeah? Yeah. You think uh, that, that does a pretty good job of fitting the exact criteria of what makes a good action movie? Uh, Rocky would probably do better, honestly, but yeah, I think you'd do okay. For me, it's it's even more modern than that, I would say. Uh, definitely the John Wick movies. Oh, dude, I didn't even think of that. You've seen, have you seen those? I haven't, no. I hear they're awesome. Holy smokes. Uh, outside of Marvel, I really don't give two you know, shits about, you know, like the Fast and Furious movies or anything like that. I love the first one. That's about where it is. Fast and Furious or John Wick? Love. Yeah, uh... Fast and Furious. I love the first one. I know it's not good, but I love it. How much do you know about John Wick? Uh, not a whole lot. You would love it. I encourage you to not watch it with Chef Tango. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's incredibly, ridiculously violent. Mm, yeah, okay. He kills so many people, but what separates this film is... Every action film seems to be driven by the same sort of motivation. Uh, you know, race against time, or, he, you know, he's got my wife. They killed my brother. Some, you know, something like that that you can, like, kind of sympathize with. Yeah. Never before in a film have I seen a better motivation for revenge uh, to just bury as many bodies as possible. As ridiculous as it is, the whole film, you're like, yep. Yep, kill them all. Yep, they deserve to die. <laughs> so I won't, I won't spoil too much for you. No, okay. but that's definitely, uh, it, it's it continued to be one of my favorite ongoing series. Now there's three films and there's a fourth in the works. Yeah. Next, my question for you, Teacup Recipes: What fast food or chain restaurant would you say you've given the most money to over your entire life? I hate to admit it, but McDonald's. Yeah, it's just. You know what you're going to get? Consistency, I guess. A whole lot. Cheap, affordable. To be honest, it is probably the one fast food restaurant that I refuse to eat at anymore. Uh, just not even like any one bad experience. It's just nothing on their menu has ever really appealed to me. I haven't been a fan of just a lot of the way their food tastes, and they're always kind of just nasty looking restaurants. Right. But I understand that in a pinch can come in pretty clutch. The, the McDouble with the Big Mac sauce is my personal favorite. You have them, uh, you order a McDouble, you have them build it like a Big Mac. That that's pretty killer. I'm not gonna lie. But now that I've learned to cook thanks to my little cooking channel, I actually don't eat fast food as much anymore because I'm like I can actually make that now. That's fantastic. That's awesome. Yeah, that 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 does help things a little bit. I still have and continue to give way too much of my time and money to Chipotle, but uh, if I was on the road, I wouldn't blame you. I wouldn't. Yeah, that's different, you know. Like, luckily, I work right in my hometown, so like, it's not too bad. I'm away from my house no more than nine hours at a time. So. Yeah, given my line of work, being an admissions counselor, it's a lot of on-the-road time and a lot of fast food. And oh, yeah. Chipotle just, uh, I will dictate my visiting schedule and location around whether or not there's a Chipotle close to the hotel I'm trying to get into. This so. is a weird random fact, and, you, and I would look it up to make sure I'm telling you correct information, but I believe okay. McDonald's may have owned a steak of Chipotle at one time. That's not as of today, though. Not anymore. Huh. But at one time, yeah. In 16 restaurants, uh, when McDonald's Corporation became a major investment in 1998. You are correct. Yeah, I don't know how I remembered that. Tim Hortons is a huge cafe chain in both Canada and a lot of New York and a lot of northern states. 
I used to have them up here in Maine. They actually left the state a few years ago. I think they also have some steak in Wendy's. Burger King owns Tim Hortons. Oh, it's Burger King. Check. I'm sorry. No, I think you're right. Maybe it is Burger King. I don't remember. I thought it was Wendy's for some reason. Those bastards at Tim Hortons aren't doing roll up the rim to win this year. I'm very upset about it. Yeah. You know what I th thought of when uh, I, I saw roll up the rim to win? I thought this episode of the Aqua Teen Hunger Force, which I don't know if you watched that. God, but there's a an, long time. But... There's the episode where they go to this restaurant and Carl opens up his thing. He's like, tonight you'll get your dick ripped off. And that's literally all I can think of is just Mr. Wongberger trying to rip off this dude's dick. Why am I admitting this on an interview? God, what's wrong with me? Oh, I'm definitely putting that in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, keep that. That's pretty good. All right, let's 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 move on then. <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. Do you have any real life stories or examples of times that you've tried to describe your channel and or your involvement with the TCAP community? And if so, how did it go? I have a few. Uh, there's a... Uh... I actually have a really good friend that I worked with. Uh, I'm not gonna name the place, but we worked together for several years. I actually interviewed him. I'm gonna keep his identity a secret, obviously. And he's really into that stuff. Not as deep as I am, but he's into it. So after I quit that job and moved on to other things, I came back to my old job and I told him about it. And he watched the channel and he's actually uh, a subscriber as of right now. And I will make sure I tell him about this interview too. And like, he actually loves the stuff. He gets it. He's like, yeah, the stuff looks really good. You know, I'm like, yeah, you know? That's awesome. And it worked really well. That's the only successful story. Right. The rest, like, I tried telling my mother about it and she looked at me kind of weird. I'm like, I'll tell you about when I get to a thousand so. There you go. All right. Well, let me grow organically and then I will tell you. I think my family has like a vague understanding of what I do. I don't think they've ever seen anything I've produced outside of maybe the student film project I made. Yeah. But I've ended many dates and relationships <laughs> with my sort of ex explanation as to my interest in, in this community. And sometimes it's been on a first date if it comes up. Other times we, I've been seeing somebody for a little while, I tell them, and, and strangely enough, the girls don't really seem to call me back after that. It's kind of bizarre. But the right ones will. <laughs> that's that's true. And I'm hoping that because I'm half cooking show that maybe that will keep people intrigued. You know what I mean? A themed satirical cooking show with a touch of social justice and commentary is how you should pitch it a little bit yeah that, that's pretty good it's actually. a lot easier than the lorn vegan bologna cooking show sex offender show hosted by you and your dog <laughs> <laughs> i actually i got an idea for one of my subscribers i'm gonna see if i can find it but he wanted me to do death row recipes mm. and at first i'm like that's quite an undertaking but i'm like i might i might take this on wow like, that's a big low, because if you've seen some of those meals, like that's like cooking a whole feast. Yeah, they're crazy. Wow, that would, that would be something really cool to check out for sure. I'm going to make one, and I'll see if people like it. And if they like it, I'll keep making more. But and I'm also playing with the idea of doing a few live cooking shows, and I've got a, a clever title that I came up with all by myself. Yeah. The Liquid Lord Reality Show. Oh. <laughs> Nobody's ever done that before. At all. It's liquid and it's solid too in the foods uh, and drinks. And yes. Drink, yes. But liquid in the sense of you, uh, are, you, are you taking on the persona of Lorne or are you just yourself? I take on the persona of Liquid Lorne. I was actually going to try to start a Liquid Lorne saga. Where it's I was like gonna, your alter ego. Yeah, I was going to try to claim that I'm Lorne and this guy named Ian Brandon Anderson's making a mockery out of me, but he got <laughs> arrested and went to prison, so I uh, held off. Well, that's not going to work, because I can tell you right now, you speak way too coherently, and your videos look way too nice. Oh, yeah. Like, once I got up to, like, 4K resolution, I'm like, I'm not going to pull that saga off, so forget it. <laughs> okay, I got a, I got a fun thinking-type question here. Just follow me if you can. Yeah. I'm not trying to get religious on you here. Okay. But let's take the generally held belief, if we go by exactly how the story is told, if we accept for a moment that Jesus Christ, the mortal son of God, when he was on earth, 
was crucified on the cross and killed. Yeah. And the crux of the Christianity religion and, and where the, the mystery of faith and things lie is that Jesus Christ rose from the dead three days later, or two and a half days, or however long it was. Rose from the dead again, correct? Yeah. Now my question to you is after he rose again, how did he die the second time? Alzheimer's. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why nobody ever remembers that part. He couldn't even remember it. Yeah, exactly. My God. Alzheimer's. His uh, son had to take care of him. <laughs> but the son wanted to live a quiet life. His name is Bruce. Mm, wow, Bruce Christ, eh? Bruce Christ, oh, yeah. Seems, seems like a good kid. Yeah. Actually, his last name was Hong. <laughs> Jesus Hong. Yeah. He don't, we don't know where he got Christ yeah. from. It's Jesus Hong. <laughs> I always love to throw that at people, get them to think for a second. Because I got I got to trap them with the logic. I'm like, he rose from the dead. And they're like, yeah. I'm like, so he's alive again. Yes. I'm like, great. Then what? It's like, uh... I actually put that on a Ask Reddit thread. Or it was either Ask Reddit or No Stupid Questions or something. And I had an actual minister chime in with the answer. And he said, it, 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 the way he kind of explained it to me, and he, he, you know, he says, if we're really going on, on a, a bit of a literal sense, plus what the actual scriptures say, like the moment he returned to life was when he achieved like God status pretty much and was able to like transcend death itself. So, oh, I never even thought of it like that. So, I was thinking so at that literal point, life. He's, oh. You know, he's been given life again, but it's not necessarily like mortal human life again. And it's just, you know, widely believed that he just ascended after that or just, you know, fucked off to Mars or something. I don't know. Yeah, right. He's yeah. on vacation. He's in uh, Cuba with Tupac and Elvis. Yep, 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 yep. yep. <laughs> and I thought that was a good way of explaining. I'm like, all right, that, you know. That, uh, that is pretty cool. Canonically actually. makes sense, that. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I got two more questions for you, but this next one is a bit of a double sort of ended uh, question. Sure. I don't know if you consider yourself a gamer at all, but what would you consider to be the most over or underrated video games? Overrated Call of Duty. Any particular one or the whole franchise? Uh, I think the whole franchise now, like everybody and their friggin' father plays it. Hell, the guy that got famous for playing Call of Duty Wings of Redemption doesn't even like it anymore, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, it's like, I hate Call of Duty. Fuck, it ruined my life. I'll give it the props. It, it does deserve. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, and absolutely. And what it's been able to do and pave the way for first-person shooters. And... Oh, yeah, definitely. But they're just doing the same shit now yeah, over and yeah. over. They're just... Nazi Zombies I... is only fun for, for so long. But, uh... Yeah, that was fun back in 2011. I'm over it now. How about underrated games that don't get enough love? Underrated? Oh, God. I, I, for for me, it's Yoshi's Island on the Super Nintendo. I, I fucking love that game. That's cool. I, I think love that game. Underrated for me is probably Luigi's Mansion for yeah, GameCube. Yeah, love that game. That was a fantastic game. Yeah. yeah. I don't think love I I don't Nintendo. I don't play video games enough to to know what is or isn't overrated. You see, I don't either. That's you know I haven't I used to I used to play quite a bit. Like now I'm just I'm only so busy with work and my little tango. I would say maybe show. Fortnite. But I don't. I've Definitely never actually even Fortnite. played it, so I guess that's unfair to say. So, nah, it is. It's overrated. No. All right then. I'm just gonna go with it. Okay, here's my last one to you, and it's a bit of a fun hypothetical again. Are you ready? Oh, I'm ready. Yeah. Here's the scene. <laughs> it is the apocalypse, the end of the world. The bombs are dropping. The meteors on its way. Humanity has only moments to live. There's no way of survival, but somehow you've been tasked with DJing the end of the world. What song do you play to send mankind out on? Let me see if I can find the name of it. I'm going to find something fun and festive and something nobody's ever heard of. I know the name of the song. I'm praying that it's not in friggin' Japanese, the name of the song. But it's on the Dan Mason Summertime EP, if that makes any sense. I've never even heard of that. What, Dan Mason? What is that? It's, I used to watch a lot of like Ace's Adventures and things like that on YouTube and it's their background music. It's freaking amazing. Actually, gotcha. Actually, no, forget that. You know what I would play? The, you know when Bass Shaman has the streams every night, he has like a playlist of jazz music? Yeah. Not the first song you hear, but the second song. It's called Got That Feeling by Peter Sandberg. I'd play that. It's nice, calming. You know, at least if you gotta die, you might as well be relaxed. 
I mean, I'm coming at this from two schools of thought. The first that pops to mind is We'll Meet Again, Vera Lynn, the ending of Dr. Strangelove, How I Learned to Love, you know, Stop Caring and Love the Atomic Bomb, that film. Old song from like the 40s. It's very, very oh, yeah. chill, same sort of thing. It's just a, a thing you want to watch the world burn to. But on the other hand, I might, you know, obviously I'm never going to get this chance again. I might just play Every Time We Touch by Cascada. No shit. <laughs> just, 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 just to be ridiculous. <laughs> Dude, yeah. If I'm going with a meme and a serious answer, maybe Country Roads, John Denver. That's a good... I, I can't explain it, and maybe you can. Country Roads. Why is it that regardless of age, gender, sexual orientation, race, economical status, how is it that everybody on earth sings that song when they're drunk? I've been trying to figure that out since the late 90s, and I have no idea. It's an anomaly. I could sing it at gay bars down the street, just as I could go to the country club uh, across the way with all the old fucks and, and start singing it there and everybody would fucking join in. I hear there's a couple good karaoke bars in Nashville you could go to and sing that at too. A friend of mine told me about it. Well, them. I'm only going if the talent, the uh, country music talent scouts hang out there, so. Yeah, that's, that's the only time to hang out. I don't think they were there, though. I'd love to make a career in country music, and I can't think of a better, faster, easier way than going to a karaoke bar, getting drunk, and singing my favorite songs. And waiting to get discovered. Yes. That That's that's a surefire plan. And when you do that, you want to use my $700 recipes. Do not put any additional effort in. Don't treat it seriously. Never. Don't get professional help or take lessons or learn music theory. Uh, don't also, change your style. Don't dress up. Special. Always be drunk when you're there. Also, start chain smoking. Yeah, that usually helps with the vocal range. Oh, yeah. You don't want to have too much yeah, of a absolutely. vocal range. So, you know, you want to limit no. yourself. No, definitely not. Like, and you want to cover the Heartland song, I loved her first. Maybe if I can get another career as a wedding singer of sorts, I'm always going to pitch that to. Oh, <laughs> yeah, should, dude. You know, I should perform the song for you. Wait, it's such a sweet song. It's so nice. And I'm just like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, it is. But uh, you know what's messed up is when Lauren sang that, I don't think he had any idea that's what that was. It was for a father to sing to his daughter. Not for a registered sex offender to sing to his girlfriend, who is 13. It's supposed to be 13. Exactly. Even stranger than that, he himself says, All right, let me think of something I can sing to you. He has every song yeah. ever at his disposal that he knows and can sing. He doesn't go with Johnny Cash, Hank no, Williams God forbid. Jr. He doesn't go with anything modern or even like at the time really well super recognizable why he chooses the song that was probably specifically made for fathers and daughters to dance at a wedding together creepy why did that pop into his head first and even weirder than that why does he know all the words to that song it's a question <laughs> of all the things to memorize was that especially popular at the time that it was playing all the time that he would just no it was words. a popular song. I was working in uh, the retail industry back during that time, and I would hear it on the radio quite a bit. More during 2006, though, not so much 2007. But yeah, 2006 and 5. You know, I'm like, what the fuck, Lord? All right. Well, let's bring it back around now. I finished my questions that I wanted to ask you. Is there anything you'd like to know about me that you didn't get the opportunity to ask? If not, that's okay. I have a couple of ideas of things I'd like to throw at you to see if you'd be interested in checking out. Sure, actually, I do have one question. What got you into the To Catch a Predator community? Like, what? How, how did it begin? Did you meet somebody in the community? Did you just discover the show? Where did, where did it begin? It was uh, two things. It, it, I wasn't even necessarily, I was aware of when the show was originally airing, but I was still, I, I was, uh, let's say I was the, the age that the decoys were pretending to be at that time. So Dateline NBC wasn't especially uh, appealing to me at the time. No, not so much. Me neither. I was aware of it, and I think I, when I started re-watching clips on YouTube when I was a sophomore in college, I would just sit in my dorm room and look for any reason not to do homework. And getting lost down that rabbit hole was great because it is such schadenfreude and like just beautiful to watch even on its own before any sort of commentary or anything is added onto it. Just at its core all the time, you know, it's, it was fantastic. What 
kept me propelled, I think, was thank you, YouTube algorithm. You actually helped me out, probably. I think sampling so many of those clips ended up throwing Bay Shaman sort of my way in terms of my recommended. I can't even remember when I, like, actually discovered him, but he was uh, by far the, the first person I was made aware of who I was watching the content on. I'm like, right. no way is this guy sitting here for 40 minutes talking about uh, hamburgers walk or... or, or put that in the refrigerator right. like, like you're making a whole video about that and then on top of that to make really well edited beautiful looking music videos and and skits and record like the the sound effects and the editing was next fucking level and you know he's clearly still improved even from there in terms of the technical aspect of being a youtuber and it, it was his personality was just magnetic i would say it was truly special and, and attracting and, and, and really drew me in. And that's, in you know, same sort of thing. The algorithm kind of learns a bit and uh, starts to throw other channels out there. And that's how most of us, you know, kind of just stumbled on this by accident. And it's I don't think it would have happened if somebody came to me and said, hey, there's a bunch of people on YouTube that make fun of the prayers to catch a predator. I'm like, well, doesn't everybody do, wouldn't everybody do that and they're like no you don't understand like they make uh they make music videos and else I'd, I'd probably look at them kind of weird the fact that i discovered it on my own time by myself i think really was what and and, and that's been the case with almost any piece of media uh with a television show or a song or album or something if i'm the one that discovers it and i feel like i've made the the discovery i tend to like it a lot more than if somebody's like oh you should check this out you would like it i'm like Fuck you, don't know me. Yeah, I, I'd be the same way, honestly. Like, I discovered it because I was... In 2014, I binge-watched the to Catch a Predator episodes back when the full episodes were on YouTube. Yeah. And one day, I... Better days. Just, better days. Better days. Oh, yeah. One day, they were gone. They were just fucking gone. And then I said, all right, whatever. I forgot about it. 2017 came. I was in my own place. I was just kind of chilling. I had just gotten Tango from the shelter a few days before. And I said, hey, Tango, you want to watch The Catch a Predator? And we discovered Mr. Gigi. And we watched The Predator Chronicles. And then we discovered Arrested Development. And those are fucking hilarious. And I discovered, I enjoyed that. I think I discovered a couple of your videos in that process. And I was just like, mm, yeah, okay. And I was looking for Ember and Shaman. I consider myself to be more of a drifter where I was putting out some content myself, but my, my favorite thing to do would be like a guest spot, a guest feature on somebody else's analysis video or, you know, they would ask to have my input. That was always fun to do, especially because I'm, I'm much more concerned about the seeing the success of my friends prosper through this than, than I really care for myself. Sure, sure, yeah. It's been a, quite a wild ride, and I don't think back then in 2015 or 2016 or whenever I got into it that I would still be here today with a channel, with a catalog of films and, and, and you know videos dedicated to this subject and, and just how crazy and weird it's been that it's remained relevant, too, through all that time. Relevant to us and then it, it creeping more and more into the mainstream. Right. I had no idea. I'd be making content, honestly. Like, I remember... Like 2017 watching it, I'm like, this stuff's amazing. I never dreamed that I'd actually be making content, let alone a fucking cooking channel. <laughs> you know what I mean? I've said it before on other videos, and I'm sure you'll agree with the sentiment. If you're thinking about making a video, do it. Just do it. Absolutely. We don't care if 100 people have analyzed the Dustin interrogation. There's always still going to be new shit to talk about, and your in input will, will be greatly appreciated and heard out. Actually, speaking of that, have you checked out the Great Babsby yet? Yes, very recently. Yeah, I've been I was going to say, you haven't checked videos. her yes. out. Exact, great example of, of somebody who... Is, is kind of is just bringing their own personal spin to the content and and is grown as a, as a result for sure i was binging her version of the holy lordography when i was actually making 700 dollar recipes that whole time yes another just a fantastic example of how to develop a community just support one another and get creative and, and oh, yeah. do your own thing you will absolutely i mean i'll personally be around if anybody has any questions or needs any advice uh, oh yeah there's a whole flurry of people who would also uh, that are probably more proficient than i am that uh that would be willing to help as well okay i definitely know right now what movie i'd like to recommend 
Uh, I'm going to throw some television shows at you, and I'd like to know if you've seen these, okay? Sure. Okay. The Adult Swim program, The Eric Andre Show. I have not seen that one. Oh, boy. You are in for a treat. <laughs> I I think it would be best if I gave you absolutely no context, and I will show you where, where you can download or stream it. Man, I'm excited for that. I think you'll get a big kick out of it. For film, that's easy. We we uh, we discussed it briefly in the interview. John Wick. That is your okay. absolute, definitely first watch homework assignment. Okay. And if you're not impressed enough that you're ready to immediately watch the sequel, I'll be uh, blown away. Okay. Not to not to hype it up too much here. No, no, yeah, no. yeah. Now music. What would you say is sort of the, your go-to genre? I know you had ex- expressed some interest in metal before. Um, nowadays it's more jazz, honestly. Like, I like being calm now. I'm not into genocide, you know what I mean? Like, that's not really my grind anymore. I'm more into just easy listening. Like, if you've watched a lot of my videos, you'll notice I have a lot of lo-fi beats in Yes, exactly. Yeah, that is my jam, mm-hmm. not just because they're free and I'm trying to monetize someday, which is kind of silly sounding right now, but I think it's going to be a big success down the road do you have uh, an appreciation of sorts for sort of 90s era like oh big time. like grunge rock but just like music from the 90s do you what are some of your favorite 90s bands? uh nirvana was a big one Soundgarden was another one I'm trying to think of what else there should be a ton of these like that's what i listened to the most corn was a good one too i remember being a teenager wanting to get the big jinko jeans but being a chubby kid, like, they actually fit me properly, so it didn't quite work. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, like, I found a pair from the Goodwill that were just my size, and they actually fit like regular pants. <laughs> that's, a, that's like an old bit from The Simpsons when uh, he's trying on the, the oversized clown pants, and it just fits perfect. You're like, well, I've never had a pair of pants fit so well in my life. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what happened, too. <laughs> Like, I remember that era, you know what I mean? It was so crazy. I look back, I'm like, what the fuck were we thinking? Does the group Soul Coughing ring a bell? Not one bit. If you but like I'm going some to write it down. smoother, jazzier type bass lines and a, a unique style of rock and, and lyrical writing, I, do. I think Soul Coughing is going to be the way for you. It's one of my all-time favorite 90s bands and very underrated. They've had a couple of hits that I'd be surprised if you didn't hear or remember when you hear them. But I'm going to recommend the album El Oso. El... Uh, E-L-O-S-O. I'll, I'll send you a list yeah, of everything. Yeah, yeah. It was probably the first album by them I ever listened to all the way through, and I, I go back to it time and time again. I, I just... Oh, that's crazy. That's awesome. Because, like, a lot of the stuff I listened to back then, like, I don't really go back to it. I actually go back to the hip-hop and R&B of the 90s. Which is weird, because like it's, when I was... It's almost timeless. It, it is. It's, it's so corny, but it's timeless. It, it really is. Like, I was so into the metal back then, I forgot about the hip-hop, and I listened to that 10 or 15 years later. I'm like, man, I missed out on some other music, you know? Because I wasn't open-minded. Which now I'm a lot more open, you know? Like, there's certain things I'll never try, but I mean, for the most part, I'm open-minded. Refresh my memory, have you ever made a cocktail video on your channel? You know, I'm glad you mentioned that. No, I was supposed to make a 100 subscriber special with cocktails and shit. But I, at that time, my ability to make videos was extremely limited. So I never got around to it. When I do that uh, cocktail video, I would like to have you with me on that one. Oh, that would yeah. be so cool. I, I hope I can get that to work. But my fourth wild card thing I would like you to do is to get creative, develop, or adapt a list of cocktails that you want to make into okay. that video. I'll be more than happy yeah. to help you out. I gotta save up some money for that one just because I gotta buy like alcohol and, you know, I'll be buying nips and shit like that because I don't really drink a lot of alcohol anymore. But uh, that's definitely something I want to do. I'll definitely need, like, maybe like narrating it or something like that. Because at the time, when I promised a 100 subscriber special, I'm, get, I'm not going to bullshit you. I did not expect to actually have to come through with well, that you're, promise. You're, uh, six times beyond that now, so I'd, it's the least we can yeah, do. Yeah, so we got to, yeah, yeah, it's the least I can do. Now I'm like thinking of like, a, a, people are like, what are you going to do when you hit a thousand? I'm like, a thousand? I'm well, like, fortunately, really? the thing I'm best at is uh, puns. So when we're coming up with pun drinking names related to predators, yeah. I'm, I'm going to be your guy. Don't worry about that. 
yeah, we'll be doing that. That's probably going to be more of like a spring-summer thing. I'll probably record it in sessions. Like, I'll record one drink every couple weeks. What we'll do then, if you'd like, going. is either create the first draft of the video or a script. Just And, and the, the actual thing I'll recommend that you do in this next week time is to actually toy around and make a cocktail. See if you can create one yeah. on your own that, that you say, you know what, this is uh, not too bad. I think some people would like to try this. I've actually got one in mind right now. I'm going to keep it to myself for right now, though. All right. We it get may, back to the lab again. It may or may not involve Cialis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my> <laughs> <God>. <laughs> like ground up around the rim like a margarita. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, the Jeff uh, Sokol special. The horny predator on the go. <laughs> what you do here is we begin with the cheapest vodka. That's thing one. Thing two... Ocean Spray Orange Juice. I can't, I can't imagine this with... that anything is going to be uh, an expensive version of it. Everything's going to be way watered down. Way Ooh. watered down. Oh, yeah, it has to be. Way watered down. That is Whoa. going to be my recommendation for you. I would love for you to sometime in the next week check out the film John Wick, the first one. You okay? The television show, Eric Andre Show. You okay? El Oso album by Soul Coughing, and we're going to do a little experimenting with some cocktails. Yep, I will do one. I don't know if I'll record it yet, but I will definitely do a little bit of experiment. That'll be something I'll definitely want your input on, the. Because now that I have like a catalog of actual recipes that... Did you know people actually cook my stuff? That doesn't surprise me at all. I didn't until like a couple months ago. I had a lot of subscribers. Yeah, I tried this. It's really good. I'm like, you, you what? <laughs> That's why my, I've slowed down dramatically now because I'm like, I got to make sure this shit's actually good now. <laughs> Well, as a, a tea capist and an alcoholic, uh, I think I will be... Yeah, yeah, I think you'd be the best candidate. Okay, now, off the top of your head, if you need a moment to think, try to think of some television shows or films that come to mind that you think, now having spoke to me a little bit, I, I might be interested in. Television shows and films? Yeah. If I can't think of anything of that nature, which I can, I'll think of a couple. Are YouTube channels also acceptable? They can qualify, I would say, as our wild card option, unless you have something else in mind. Because if it's a if it's a series on YouTube, then I, I would call that a TV show. Okay, yeah. I'm trying to think. Uh, yeah, I might actually need a moment. I actually don't watch a lot of TV anymore. As weird as that sounds. Yeah, everything's streaming now, and most of the the content I watch isn't even on any. I mean, it's on YouTube and, and things like. Yeah, that. Yeah, right? exactly. Yep. Like my favorite YouTube channel to watch during the week. There's this old guy called. His name is Crazy Bob, right? And he has a goose named George, and I fucking love that goose. Is it an animated channel? No, it's a like this. A, it's a vlog, and this dude is just he brings his goose into Walmart. What? And it's cool because he's like, hey, Get hey, George. <laughs> and then like when he goes into Walmart, he's like, I got manager's permission. And then he's like, George, you want some collard greens and some kale and some cabbage? And George is just like, oh. <laughs> and the whole time just honking i'm like and then there's another one where he's like fucking uh he changes his water and george the goose gets pissed off like, this goose is fucking pissed he's like what the fuck are you doing with my goddamn water i want to take my ninth bath of the day you know like this goose is pissed it, it's so funny though. that sounds it's amazing it's a great channel it's called pet goose george i'd check it out hey george I've got that written down. I will put it as either the TV show or the wild card, depending on if you can think of anything else. TV show? Oh, shit, shit. There's some... Most of my TV shows are like from the 80s and 90s. Like... Oh, Jesus. Hold on. Hold on. Let me figure it. There's this one show by Chris Hansen. No, I'm just kidding. Obviously, we've seen that one a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just uh, I'm just on pins and needles waiting for that investigation that was supposed to come out, be aired and edited by last fall. Yep, but never fucking happened. Is what we're witnessing now is that the investigation? Oh fuck, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's just uh, yeah, that's something else. He might be doing the right thing, but it's for the wrong reasons. It's a dumpster fire for sure, but an entertaining dumpster fire. No, you can't deny that. I'm, I'm with you. Real talk. I'm trying to think of a TV show or uh, movies. Like I said, Ricky O would be a good movie. I mean, I don't know if you'd like it, but it'd be funny. Actually, have you ever watched South Park? 
I'm sure you have. I, I have watched some. I'm pretty familiar with it. I haven't tuned into maybe the last season and a half. No, I haven't either. No, I kind of got out of it. But back in the day, they created this uh, musical. It's called Cannibal the Musical. And the first time... You're like I, the second or third person to bring that up to me. Yes. I've never seen it. The first time I watched it, I fucking hated it. The second time I watched it, and every time after, I loved it. It's like one of my favorite movies. I would definitely check that out. I'm gonna write that down. Cannibal the Musical. Like, okay. I fucking love that movie. I might actually watch it tonight. The skies are blue and all the leaves are green. No joke, I have been recommended several times to see that movie. I fucking so. love that movie, dude. Real talk, that shit's good. It's definitely on Liquid Lauren's list of stuff. Now, how about music? Music, my, my tastes have been here, there, and everywhere. Well, oh, good. I, so is mine. So, I guess I've been into a. Uh, I like the summertime EP by uh, Dan Mason. I don't know if you'll find it on iTunes, but you can find it on YouTube pretty easily. Okay. And and the Google Play Store has it if you want to buy it. Okay. But I, I like. I haven't listened to it in a while, but it's the only like full album I've bought in the past five years, besides the first Lincoln Park album, but that kind of more qualifies as '90s, 2000s. Well, I will look it up. Doesn't ring a bell for me. So. Yeah, it's it's kind of yeah, it's kind of cool. Like a lot of yeah, like, I see. Okay, okay, great. Yeah, yeah, I'll be happy to check that out. Yeah, excellent. Let me make a brief note of that. Yeah, I've okay, written down. Well, I've mine. got my album and I've got my movie. If we can think of a wild card or television show, I'll, I'll keep the pet goose George. Hey one of those George, show movie music. I have an idea. Check it out. I know that you have uh, celiac disease, so... That is correct. I've got one for you. It's a low-carb take on a tea cap recipe. It is called the Meat Rocket. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm already on the edge of my seat. Check it out. It's a uh, cheeseburger-shaped hot dog, and it's eight inches in length. I haven't actually made the video yet, but by the time this gets released, the video will be up. And I'll, I'll show you when I have it released, obviously. Yeah. But okay. It's a, a pretty much a cylinder-shaped, hot dog-shaped cheeseburger. You're going to flatten some ground beef, roll a stick of cheese in the middle, and then fry Jeez. it up on your uh, a cast right. iron or a grill. That, is, that sounds like a meat rocket to and me. And then yeah. serve it up. And if you were going low-carb, you can get some romaine lettuce and use that as a bun. Top it with some ketchup and mustard. And the, or you can add some bacon to it too if you want. I might actually do that. The best part is you can cut it in half and you can make the white stuff come out. Ah! <laughs> and the white stuff being mayonnaise, right? Yeah. Oh, it'll be the, unless you use like a white cheese, that could come out too. Wow, that's a great idea. Yeah. I'm uh, going to have to do You'll have to send me the recipe, obviously. Oh, yeah, yeah. When I make the video, you'll be like the first person I tell about it. That'll be cool. And I, I won't be the first person to attempt a tea cap recipe IRL. And of course, I encourage all of any viewers and subscribers to also check yeah. it out and give it a whirl. Well, now I have my homework. It's a little bit cheating, but the television show slash channel and series, I'm going to check out Pet Goose George at the recommendation of t Cap Recipes. Yeah. The film Cannibal the Musical. Cannibal the Musical. The yes. Film. You'll love uh, it. The album he's recommended, Dan Mason's Summertime EP, and I'm going to attempt to make the first ever, or I mean, outside of t Cap Recipes, Meat rocket recipe, low carb hot dog recipe extraordinaire, and I will be happy to let you know how I feel about it when it comes out. I I'm a, I consider myself a relatively good cook, so we'll see. Yeah, and it's a it should be like from what I've been planning in my head, it should be a very quick and easy recipe to execute. Not very expensive. You won't have to keep much stuff in your fridge except maybe the lettuce. You know what I mean? If you want to get like a gluten free hot dog bun in place of it, you could certainly use that. That wouldn't be an issue. I'm going to be watching the Eric Andre show. I'm followed by the John Wick movie. And the music I'll be checking out will be El Also by Soul Coughing. And our last little wild card bit of homework, we're going to be hitting the cocktail lab. You betcha. I'll uh, have one cocktail ready that I will uh, I will let you mo know more about that next week. You'll have to send that to me too. I can pair it with my uh, meat rocket. Yeah. <laughs> well... 
that's it for today. What we're going to do now is break and meet back again in about a week, maybe two weeks, once we've completed all this stuff. I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you so much, and uh, I will see you then. Yeah, I'll see you then, dude. And we're back, and holy shit, it's been like a month. Yeah. We were both sick, I think, the last time we were recording. I had a cold. You might have just straight up gotten the coronavirus after we got off the phone uh, talking to each to other. To be honest, I really think I did at this point. But you're happy and you're healthy right now. Happier and healthier, for sure, compared to two weeks ago. Excellent. Yeah. I'm very happy to hear that. That shit sucks. That's great. I'm really excited to talk about some of the stuff that we recommended each other. Why don't we start with music? Now, you recommended the Dan Mason Summertime EP, which is on YouTube. It's it's not very long. There's it, just a couple of tracks, but it is far and away my, my new favorite type of music that I've been listening to for the last couple of months. I listen to it every time I go to bed at night, those lo-fi beats to hip-hop, you know, study and relax to. I have that going every day when I'm going to bed. It's just something about how smooth it is and, and the sound and the images that it provokes when you're when you're listening to it in your own head. Yeah, absolutely. It's got this very cyberpunk aesthetic and I don't know, I just really like it. I think it's such chill music, good summertime seems to suit the title pretty well. I think I'd love to drive down the coast listening to that with the windows down enjoying myself i checked out some of his other albums and music and i really liked it all because it's all very similar if you're into that lo-fi hip-hop beats type thing with a little bit of more creative edge to it i definitely recommend dan mason as an artist that was a, a great album to check out oh yeah absolutely like i like that kind of stuff that's why i use it in a lot of my videos now because i notice it even makes the content a lot better too you know it does it just makes everything cooler yeah, definitely. All right, you have to. I remember. I don't remember the name of the album you had me listen to, but I remember listening to it because I remember it was the first day that I was able to stand up without puking. Oh, uh, El Oso by Soul Coughing. Yes, I. Oh, great. Now you're gonna have this association of being sick with uh, this album. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's an unfortunate thing. So, like, I remember it. I. It sounded more 2000s and 90s, and I looked at it, and it was actually from the 90s, you know what I mean? It was definitely ahead of its time, you know what I mean? Which I thought was pretty fascinating, you know what I mean? I, I like it when I listen to something older and it sounds a little newer. I know, I don't know if that sounds stupid or not, but... No, yeah, I, I understand. Their, their music, their genre is hard to pin down, uh, as is the case with all of their albums. It's sort of alternative rock, but it gets very experimental. Yeah, I noticed that too. Like, you know, obviously the day I decided to listen to it, you know, I wasn't sure what to think because I'm just like, I'm like, yeah, I'm not puking. I don't know what this is, but it sounds pretty cool. You know what I mean? Just something to I'll vibe have to, to. Yeah, pretty much. I'll have to give it a go again now that I'm a lot better, obviously, you know? I could even recommend another one of their albums too that's, that's equally as good. But that one was just the first one I ever heard all the way through by that group, and I, I really like Soul Coughing. I would go ahead and rate the Dan Mason album that you recommended probably an 8 out of 10. Right. And how about you? I'm going to go 7, but again, keep in mind I was sick, so that might have a lot to do with it. You're a sick son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, right? Get my ass kicked. <laughs> how about movies? I'm really excited to hear what you have to say about John Wick. Oh, dude, all right. So when I first saw the movie, I had forgotten your little warning to get Tango out of the room. I had completely forgotten it again. I was kind of sick. And when I watched the movie, though, I was three days without puking. So I said, all right. I read on YouTube for like four bucks. I said, all right, we're going to watch this thing. At first, you know, like, you, you know the part I'm talking about where the guy comes in and shoots his dog. I do. And steals his car and beats the shit out of him. Yeah, I almost what, I almost broke down. I'm like, that motherfucker, you got to be kidding me. Like, this dude just lost his wife. You go and kill his dog. But as I watch the movie, I'm like, Nah, nah, this is gonna be okay. And like, literally, you kill the dude's dog and everybody dies. Yeah, I think that seemed fair at the time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would, I would kind of react the same way, honestly. <laughs> you know, I'm like, no. Yeah, it was, it, it was so satisfying to see something, like I said before in our part one interview, a motivation that hasn't really been done in film before for, for a murderous rampage. Right. 
that you can justify because you're like, they shouldn't have fucked with his dog. They shouldn't have stolen his car, man. Yeah, right? I, I mean, I, like, if someone came at my house and killed Yazan, man, I would be all upset. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I mean, he's not really a dog. He's just a guy that likes to be treated like a dog. Did he bring his collar with him? Oh, yeah, of course. Yikes. He always, he's actually sleeping on the couch with Tango right now. Hi, Yazan, who's a good boy? <laughs> you, you try to offer him a treat and I will not accept <laughs> yeah every time and I'm like no Yazan yeah. uh, oh no so, he pooped so on the so how did you couch. feel about the movie as a whole and would you be interested in seeing the sequels which are even more ridiculous there's sequels there's two there's John Wick 2 and 3 and 4th is coming out this year I think uh, no way yeah. I'm going to have to check that out. I would probably watch the sequels. I mean, like, not tonight or anything, but definitely down the road. They hold up to, I think, I don't think there's a better one than the first one, but they definitely hold up. It doesn't lull at all. No, it's not like, it doesn't, like, completely change or anything. Like, no, it, certain it, franchises. It changed for the better. Um. Oh, that's fine. All <laughs> right. Well, come on. I'll watch you. <laughs> He says to the TV. <laughs> what would you rate it? I'm going to give the movie a 9. I think the movie was my favorite part, honestly. That's so cool. Which I, I was, was surprised because I thought it'd be the show or the music, but it was definitely the movie, apparently. It sounds like the case with you was it exceeded expectations, as it did for me, too. It definitely did. Like, I was not... I was just like, you know what? I'll give it an hour. If it ain't good, I won't watch it. And it, it was definitely good. It held my attention the whole night. Awesome. Now, you told me to check out Cannibal the Musical, and you oh, were yeah. probably the fourth or fifth person to tell me to watch this. That's a damn good movie. Yeah. I watched it, and thankfully it was on YouTube for free, which was great. I know why people told me I should watch this, because it is kind of my sense of humor. Nice. And I love B-horror films, and the fact that it was a musical was ridiculous. I was shocked, and I think I texted you when I started watching. I was like... I could hear in the voices. I didn't know anything about the movie. It, I knew I heard some familiar voices, and I finally pinned it down. I said, "Are are the guys from South Park in this shit?" Oh yeah. And you're like, yeah. That's their like one of their first projects together. I was like, oh, yep. Damn. And it made sense. It's it's very much South Park humor throughout the film. I right. got a good chuckle out of a couple of them. The songs weren't even that bad. It was. How do I put this? You know when something is so bad that it's good? Yes, that's exactly what it is. To be honest, though, I felt that it was too so good that it was bad. That why what I mean is the the script and the jokes and everything were so good that it should have gotten a much better production. I know that the cheap production is kind of half the joke. Right. But I would have loved to see this as a fully fledged like Hollywood film. I think they could have ran away with it and done a lot more. Right. But the music is catchy. It's fun. It's funny. That guy that always sings about wanting to have sex reminds me of Lorne. Yeah, he kind of looks like him too a little bit. <laughs> he does. He's like, oh god. Is that one guy that dies like nine times and he keeps coming back to life? That's I don't know. That's totally my type of humor. Oh yeah, dude. I, I I remember when I first discovered that movie. I thought I, I hated it the first time I saw. It, I'm gonna be honest with you. But for some reason, something told me, why don't we watch it again? It was a few years later, and I loved it. I fell right in love with it. Maybe I'll revisit it uh, now that I can do it anytime on YouTube. Oh, yeah, definitely. Musical, yeah. I'm giving a solid 6 out of 10 right now, but I, uh, who knows? Maybe I'll revisit it and have a new appreciation. Actually, if you want another uh, movie from the South Park, guys, I would also recommend Orgasmo. Oh, I, I've heard about that. I watched a movie documentary called This Film Is Not Yet Rated, and they talked about that. That was even funnier. How it was, you know, one of those borderline nc-17 movies yeah big time i had like real porn stars and everything that one was even funnier if you ask me like it wasn't really a musical I'm, at all i'm kind of anxious to check it out but it, it's yeah. more in your face that i would i think you might like that one more actually so we kind of stretch this a little bit when i said tv series i really mean any sort of series of episodes and you said hey there's this youtube channel called Pet Goose George that you have to check oh, out. Oh, yeah. I loved it. It's way too wholesome. 
And also, oh, yeah, I knew yeah. what it was going to be, but it was even more wholesome than I thought it would. It's so cute. And it's cons they're all the videos are consistent, but they're not very repetitive. Like they're all new situations. For, for, oh, yeah. That's what makes it fun and funny. That guy. <laughs> Just the I could see what how you have that similar relationship with Tango to be honest now Yeah, me too. That. and I saw a little bit of myself and my cat in there too And just how we talk to each other like normal people kind of <laughs> Which is funny and a, a goose. I don't know. You never see a goose walk. It's just never seen that something cool I I binged a couple of videos some of the shorter ones some of the longer ones some of the holiday ones Watching him uh, freak out about getting the water dumped out of his pool was pretty funny. Yeah, the water one's my favorite, too. Another good one, which is the way I discovered it, was the Walmart video that went viral. Mm -hmm. it, it's cool. That's why I watched, I sorted the videos by most viewed, and that was Yeah. Cool. Everybody knows George. Everybody. Like, one of the Walmart guys was asking him, and he's like, I already talked to your manager. Hey, George. You know, just <laughs> like, like <Yeah>. whoa. <laughs> like, just... It just People turns it off and on. Too, which I was surprised. They like ask permission to take pictures. And oh yeah, no, Bob, crazy Bob's cool shit, dude. Like if you ever notice about a stream, I'll actually watch some of those videos. I don't know if I'm supposed to, but I do it anyway. Like you'll notice I won't use any cuss words during those moments just because I try to be respectful for some reason. It's super sweet. It's yeah. Very cool. Wait, I mean, right. in, in the sea of the scum that is YouTube. Oh it's yeah. It's nice to find something a little bit wholesome. Like all the Jake Pauls and stupid shit that you see on there every day. It's nice to see it a channel that's just chill. Of this website. Yeah. yeah. So, so I liked it. That's, I don't know. That's got to be a 9 out of 10. I, I, just, I, knew, I knew what to expect going in, and it was exactly what I expected, but my expectations were very high. So. Right, right. It's not, it's not a television series, but it is no, something you could no. binge in an afternoon for sure. Oh, I've done it before. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's pretty good stuff. The dude, even, the guy, is a very cool person. He's funny, but he's also, like, very nice, you can tell. Oh, yeah. He's very, very... Uh, respectful. What's the word for it? Yeah, respectful is one word. Candid, I guess. Not to make TCAP references, but it's the only word I can think of right now. But, you know. Nah, he's cool shit, you know. He just walks around with his uh, pet goose and they're just chilling. It's pretty cool. Now, what... Yes, sir. ...do you think of the Eric Andre show? Again, I'm going to go, this was right after I got done washing the dishes on my first day. You might have thought sick. this was just a goddamn fever dream, to be honest. I think so, too. Like, I remember, I could kind of relate with Eric Andre for a minute. I think the Hannibal, Hannibal was part, my, part, my favorite part of the show there. He's the exact opposite. Yeah, he's America. just like, hell no. I think they played off each other really well, honestly. Uh, how much of the on-the-street stuff did you get to see? Did you start, like, season one, episode one? I did season one, yeah. I got through, like, the first, I think, four episodes before I passed out again. The second through fourth season get a much-needed quality bump in camera quality, but it's pretty much the oh, same I see. episode. And they, really, I gotcha. they start to bring, like, really big celebrities on who do not know what this show is and what to expect, and he just straight-up tortures them. Oh, <laughs> no shit. Yeah. Jack Black got it pretty bad. Howie Mandel got it pretty bad. So, so many. Jack Black was like, some of them you know kind of know what they're in for. Like uh, in a later yeah, scene, sure. Jimmy Kimmel shows up and he, he's sort of prepared, I guess. Tyler, the creator, shows up and he, he's got his own adult swim show. So, this is just like the, the same sense of humor, too. He plays off that. Really oh, well. no shit. I'm going to have to watch some of those later seasons then. I don't understand. I hate like prank videos and prank channels, but for some reason, everything he's ever done in the street is so fucking funny. I'm to the me. same way. I don't like the prank shit either. I think you should check out the later seasons. That's just a recommendation. I might have to give it a six only for the first season. Like you have to keep in mind, I haven't watched the rest of them, so that can always change. It's a variable. You know what I mean? It uh, looks like we're going to have a little bit of extra credit to do after yeah. this episode. A couple of uh, things we're going to have to keep checking out. Well, now, I'd like to bring us to the wild card. Oh? Now, this is interesting because I haven't seen this yet from you. I don't know if you've actually done it yet, or at least have plans to do it. Do you know what I'm talking about? I do. The, uh... The spirits and cocktails, that is still something I do plan to do. Okay, 
but you've got an idea though. I have an idea. What I think I'm going to do is three to five different cocktails based on the show to catch a predator. I might also have a Wings of Redemption based one as well, just so I can use Pepsi. <laughs> and mainly one of the reasons that I'll probably end up doing this sooner is because I went to the grocery store last Saturday night to do a Wings video. I was going to make the banquet meal of Redemption. I've had a lot of my people ask me, when are we going to get a banquet meal? And I said, all right, I've been kind of twiddling my thumbs on this long enough. I'm going to go try to make a Salisbury steak. And keep in mind, I don't watch the news. Oh. So I didn't know that all the stores were being raided on Saturday morning. So I go in and there's no toilet paper. There's no paper towels. There's no fucking hair. It's hamburger. all in your soup. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and I got a confession about the toilet paper soup. That's a $1 roll of paper towels that I actually boiled. <gasps> you would just lie to your subscribers like that? <laughs> well, You're lying yeah, to me a... about that? I, I can't wait to see this fucking well, cocktail video. I'm so excited. And I don't want to put you on the spot right now, but just to make sure that I absolutely know you're going to do it, give me a upload deadline. Hold on, let me figure it. Why don't you give me till April 28th? I'm a perfectionist, dude. Like, I'll reach you. There's one video I shot like three times. Okay. By April 28th, if you are watching or listening to this, check out Decap Recipes channel because I know he's going to have that video up. Okay? Yep. Like, around that time. That's going to give me time to, like... Because what I'm thinking is, like, I could film one cocktail a week, you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't Which, know what it takes to, to make a tea cap recipes video, so. And the weird thing is, is doing, like, drinks. Like, I do a lot of meals, but I figure I just boiled toilet paper and I just made hand sanitizer. So I'm pretty good with Ventry. I'm a comfort zone now. Well, what I had to do was make this very phallic shaped meal. Oh yeah, I just like that. And I did, I bought all the ingredients to make myself a cheesy meat rocket eight. Yes, the meat rocket eight. Yeah, it's on my playlist right now. It's a very easy recipe. It's a little oily, a little messy. It came out a little salty for me. Salty and dangerous? It's salty and dangerous, yes, the Westmo special. It rekindled my love of sharp cheddar cheese again. because Oh, do me too. Cheddar cheese. I don't get enough occasions to melt it in anything, but I added my own little spin to it. I, I put Ooh. up, I had a, some ingredients left over from the last thing I cooked. I, I chopped up some onions Ooh. and threw little tiny diced onions oh, in there. Talking. And in keeping with the theme, we'll just pretend those are crabs. You, you know what, uh, you know what's good about onions is they're really good for your respiratory system. That's what I hear. Y you can look it up, but I already know. In these times, more than ever. Actually, you got a valid point. Take a bite out of a raw onion today. Actually, I might go to the store after this and go grab an onion. Just a, just a nibble at. Actually, I'll grab one tomorrow. All the stores here close at 8 now. Yeah, fuck that. Yeah, it's pretty stupid. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, since we last recorded, I think we were both like, we knew about what was going on and we were both like... Oh, geez, crazy stuff, huh? Yep. Yep, I guess that's yeah. it. You know, I guess this is uh, as crazy as it's going to get, and it's just been crazier every year. I'm, right. I'm, I'm working from home now. I don't know about you. Um, They have uh, not shut down yet. Made it so that if you want to call out, like, I could take the next two weeks off, and I'm not going to get fired for it, but I don't get paid a dime. Yeah, I, I had the same thing, except I, I have to work from home. But they're giving me the next two weeks to say, if you want right. to come into the office, you can why anybody would 100 percent of my job can be done from home anyway right. so i'm just doing it from home but but yeah. now i've got a nice tasty recipe to cook up if i can't leave the house which is nice oh yeah definitely i give it a, a like a seven and a half for taste and quality but a 10 out of 10 for creativity and presentation yeah as is the case with anything you can find on tcap recipes channel which i would like to take a moment oh, to thank you encourage yeah. you to check out and subscribe to as if you're not subscribed to him and subscribe to me instead why would anybody do that that's ridiculous he actually makes some pretty good damn content so this was a pleasure more than it was an ordeal but it was a bit of an ordeal because we had shit to do every day and we we could, could not coordinate schedules yep. and you got sick and it's i was true. sick and but i'm just happy i got to do this and come together and i really hope that we get to work together again in the future we will i might need help with that cocktail special i haven't decided how i'm gonna make it yet though if there's anything i know it's alcohol so i i'm i'm Fair ready enough. i'm ready to offer my services this has been episode five now i believe of the never ever show 
I'm Heisenberg White. If you want to like and subscribe to this video, that would be greatly appreciated. As I said, TCAP Recipes uploads pretty darn frequently and also hosts a lot of live streams pretty sporadically, but they're always fun. They're always long videos, very interactive. I definitely recommend it. It's a good, if you're, if you're going to subscribe to one channel this year, it should be TCAP Recipes. That's what I got to say. Anything to send us out on? Oh, not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. And oh my God. That'll do it. Goodbye. Goodbye, my precious princesses.